As we would expect, Chinese furniture changes over time as we move from the ancient through the medieval and the medieval up to present. And here we're looking at Ming and later Chinese furniture. One of the primary changes that we're going to see is a move from Huali wood, which is this very rich red orange color, and it becomes increasingly rare. The problem is they use most of their local sources, and therefore when it runs out they need to look for something else, and they will use rosewood. They center on rosewood or start to use rosewood in the Ming because it is a very oily wood. It's full of resins, and what that means is it lasts for quite some time. So it's great for furniture. It also has a nice rich color and a close grain pattern. Now we will also see an increase in, complex, uh, in, com in complexity excuse me, as we move forward. Now the complexity will generally reflect status and it's something we see today in interior design. As things get more complex, for example, a chair that you might pick up for $20 at Walmart is going to be a pretty simple chair, but the sort of thing that's going to be handcrafted by a carpenter in a shop might be hand carved and worked. And for the Chinese in this period, as the piece becomes more complex, it will reflect status. And that becomes more important as we move forward from the Ming. We will also see increasing ornamentation as we move later and closer into the 20th century. We're going to see things like cranes and increase in the use of, and cranes are uh, auspicious creatures. We're also going to see an increase in the use of the dragon and the phoenix. The dragon usually referring to the male or the emperor, the phoenix referring to the female, referring to the empress, and creating a sense of balance between the two. We will also see the use of wasted and simian legs. Now, these change over time. As we start out in the Ming, we mostly see wasted, which means from the tabletop or sometimes the chair seat, etc., you'll see the apron drop back towards the legs, and then the legs will come out from there, whereas a simian will be squared off with the edges of the uh, piece of furniture. The wasted looks like a waist, uh, hence the name. We also see the development of the hoof foot. Now this is not your classic western hoof foot which we've dealt with in the past from Egypt and Greece and elsewhere. Here they're simply taking the piece of wood and giving it the impression of turning it inward and it will always go inward in these authentic Chinese pieces whereas in Europe it tends to sweep outward. Very different aesthetic feel. We'll also see elephant trunk legs, so named because they look an awful lot like elephant trunks. And they tend to have a rounded curvilinear form curving outward and then inward uh, using that basic hoof foot at the base. We also see the giant's arm brace. Now this is a very different idea from the West. Here instead of putting an apron on, so an apron for example, might run from leg to leg right along here underneath the top of the table. Instead, to brace into position, they will use these large curvilinear arms coming down from the base of the table to the inside corner of the leg. Now this is far more complicated. In the West today, for example, we tend to use triangles. So uh, you would have, if I'm looking from the bottom of a table, uh, you have your leg uh, usually set out somewhere. Uh, oftentimes set something like this in the West, and then we'll build a triangle in front of it to brace it. Uh, here they're using this large brace, and this is a much more technical piece because of course I have to get the right mortise and tenon angle here. Also it's not a 90 degree angle when it meets the tabletop. It's actually coming in at an angle sort of like this. And what that means is ultimately it's going to be a much stronger piece than what we see in the West, but it takes more craftsmanship, which means it's more expensive to create. 